All right, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to a uh, long time coming session three of uh, my little Black Crusade game. Uh, don't really have much in the way of announcements other than I'm hoping that uh, we'll be back to our weekly schedule uh, starting this week. Uh, you know, knock on wood, all that. Uh, but since it's been a while, let's just have the players reintroduce themselves and then we'll get started. So let's start with you, Wolf. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dare Wolf. Uh, I am currently playing the Thousand Sun Sorcerer Cantillus Sakto, who doesn't like the human. No, I'm kidding. I love you. You're the man. <laughs> You're up next, Fable. Oh, uh, I am Fable. I'm playing Ira, the big old nasty plague marine. He's got a golden heart inside. It's just covered in mucus. You can't really see it. I'm uh, Strom, uh, Strom 12341 on the Twitters. I'm playing Sorak, the uh, uh, Word Bearer's Dark Apostle. And uh, Abby right here, playing as Catatonia, the Wandering Pirate Prince. And if you don't know me by now, I'm ELH, the Game Master. And uh, we're just going to jump right into play. Well, maybe a little bit. Uh, I believe, Strom, you actually have a bit of a recap since it's been a while. It's been a while, all right. So, the ruinous powers have seen fit to bestow us the dual gifts of an ancient ship capable of taking us where we need to go and enough Rakul to sate even a cornate. After a glorious battle, we proved that we were mighty enough to take what we were given. A gift this great never comes without a price, however, and I can feel we have the eyes of the gods on us like a knife in between the shoulder blades. Okay. So, uh, it's a very good introduction. I love the thematic theming. That, that's that's a combination of words. Anyway, um, <laughs> long story short, uh, for those of you that uh, didn't get all of that, basically the players were originally on a Space Hulk. Uh, they banded together. Fought their way through a bunch of Rakul and found a Dark Age of Technology ship in the middle of a Space Hulk. And they're now coming aboard and are exploring the uh, ship as it is almost like a, a ship in a bottle, if you will, or a ship in a Space Hulk. Um, and the one thing you're noticing is that as you sort of proceed as a group through these corridors, it's not like your typical 40k spaceship where... Um, the general state is disrepair, slime on the wall, um, you know, basic, you know, refuse in the corridors, metal everywhere. This is very sleek. I dare say modern looking. Um, this looks like someone has literally taken the ship straight out of a Stardock or a factory or however you want to flavor it and just put it in your way. Like, there might even still be shrink wrap on, on certain panels, if you get my meaning. Um, but this is where we're going to join our intrepid group of anti-heroes. Um, you all are currently somewhere on deck three, trying to find your way to what you're hoping is either the bridge or some command node structure. And I think that's an excellent point to drop us in and let you guys roleplay a little bit. We must find the strategium. Pardon me. We must. Cantillus, you are a... Wait. Catatonia. That is your name. <laughs> Sorry. The wounds of battle have somewhat clouded my mind. Catatonia, where, would, where do you think the command console would be on this vessel? You have claimed to be an excellent pilot. You lead the way. And sorry, just for reference's sake to, the, to, my, G, to my friends... Yes. Uh, we start. We, we got into the cargo bay, right? Correct. That's where you came in initially. Right. Um, can I take some kind of intelligence test to see if I can remember what I saw when I saw the outline of the ship or something? Sure, you may certainly do so. Uh, I would say that this could potentially be um, just a straight perception. Um, this could also be a... I'm trying to remember the specific intel I want. Because it's, it's not yeah. a navigate... I guess it could be a navigate now it that I say it. Tell you what, I'll give you either a perception or a surface navigate. Were you thinking of logic? Uh, logic would work too. That might be work. That might be what I was trying to think of. Uh, 
Where am I? Is logic into uh, my intelligence, which would be a logic, is you know what? Oh, I have logic. Okay, yeah. Okay, game on. I have uh, 13 more points on uh, logic. Okay. If it's okay with everyone, I would like to take a logic test. Go for it. Yeah. No, not not okay with it. <laughs> right, what, what wow. That? Wow, that is uh, that is four degrees of failure right there. So I think what oh, happens man. is um, uh, I'm, hold on. I want to I want to pop my um, what's it called my uh, infamy? Black Crusade. Um, what's it called? Oh yeah. The gods I mean... are looking at me. Test. Yep, that would be infamy. <laughs> infamy. Thank you. And yeah. let's try round two. That is significantly Ooh. better. Uh, that is a total of five successes. So, Catatonia, you're sort of looking around at the corridors. There's not a whole lot of signage here, but in general, if this is a Dark Age of Technology ship, and you only have just this, this sort of inkling of general design theory back then, but unlike most modern ships, quote-unquote, that sort of have the back left or the back right or the back center at the very top. Something like this ship is probably more towards the center, still towards the back, but more towards the center of the decks. So you're either going to find it here on deck three or plus or minus one floor. Okay. Um, well, uh, my brother sorcerer, uh, my friend sorcerer, um, uh, by the looks of things, this isn't uh, necessarily the most imperial of designs. Therefore, it is probably a little more safe than where most uh, positionings of the Re Reclesium, is that what you called it? What'd you call it, Mr. Strategium. Strategium would normally be placed on an imperial vessel. Um, I'd dare guess that perhaps it is somewhere even here on the third level, but towards the center of the ship. Uh, I did not ask for an entire explanation of Imperium ship design, but rather where the center console was for the navigation of this vessel. And he answered. Oh, oh he that way. On this floor. Uh, could I... I don't know how thick the walls are here. Uh, can I maybe auspects mm -hmm. to try and see if I could figure out where it is? Sure. Yeah. Go for a uh, go for an auspex. And uh, actually, we actually already have a uh, chaos gods intervene point redeem. So it has been a while. So something I need probably should have said at the top of the stream was uh, something that we can now do, or at least the player, the viewers can now do is you guys can mess with the players. And specifically, um, the one for Black Crusade is you can specify whether to uh, give a plus 10 to an NPC or a player. And it looks like, uh, Dare Wolf, whatever check you make next, you have a plus 10 on. Oh, nice. All right. Let's get wild. All right. Here's my Auspex test. All right. All right, with two degrees of success era, uh, you're noticing two things. The mm -hmm. first is that the corridors do seem to lead all, like there's, I don't want to say a honeycomb because I don't think a honeycomb is quite the right word I want, but most of the general corridor structures seem to be leading to a central point in the general direction that Catatonia has pointed you out. The second thing you notice is that there is a large area on deck four right below you where the temperature is sub-zero. And it is true that maybe parts of the ship are exposed to the void, but this might be more akin to, say, a cryo-environment than it being exposed to a void. Okay. Uh, I will relay that. You know, seems all paths lead to home. Uh, and notify them of that. And then uh, there is an area that is far too cold directly below us. Um, it could be void or I think more cryopods. Well, we are still inside the Space Hulk, so I don't think it is void. But I wonder what cryopods we could de be dealing with here. I hope it is not more of those rack ghoul abominations. Or maybe it could be the previous crew of the ship, even. 
I do hope there's at least one Mechanicum member. We are going to need maintenance, and I'm not the most... I'm savvy with flesh, not machine. Ah! Oh, good. I'm hoping for a new companion. The last one spit in my face. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> that is very accurate. <laughs> so, do we wish to head to the bridge and pilot out, or would we like to head to the cryo bay and see if the crew still lives there? I would recommend we travel to the yeah, uh, what was the name you used again? The Strategium. The Strategium. I'm not as familiar with these vessels. We get access to the vessel, establish some sort of control, and then perhaps even from there we can determine what are in the cryopods. I agree. Uh, I spent some time uh, captaining a starship before my current vocation. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I'm in agreement. Yes, we should uh, head to the strategium. I'm sure they will have some kind of information we can use to assess uh, what's on level four. No, uh, agreed. Let us get going. All right. So you proceed to what you assume is the uh, bridge, because I'm not going to say strategium, because that's our word for the day, apparently. But uh, <laughs> as you uh, as you proceed to the bridge, what you notice is that the corridors themselves begin to open up. Um, before, it's not like you were cramped, even the uh, Chaos Space Marines among you. There was ample room for you to move around, but this is kind of going from maybe a four meter tall, four meter wide corridor to more of a maybe a five by five or a six by six. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you arrive in what is almost a grand amphitheater. And this amphitheater is a dome like structure. So if you look up at the ceiling, it's curved and spread throughout this area are rows upon rows upon rows of uh, data terminals, data shrines, uh, places where servitor and crewmen alike could be sitting and running various aspects of the ship towards the back of the room opposite where you're coming in on this is a command throne two levels above uh the base floor and right before that command throne is a sub level um that has maybe about five or six terminals but is also still above the general sort of um bridge layout now what you're noticing is again this is a ship out of time uh the standard 40k ship you're looking at something equivalent to like an n64 hooked up to a dos menu for terminals this is i mean there's still some similar trappings it's, it's not like a complete genre shift but you're seeing something a bit more user friendly is how i would say it uh those consoles that have turned on or have been left on are displaying things in a language that some of you get the gist of, but without needing to roll or anything, you can tell that this language is indeed high gothic, or at least some derivative of their such. Oh, uh, one other thing real quick is that the smell of the room, and I'm mentioning this specifically, the smell of the room is almost like a new car smell. Lemony. This strategium. Ugh, lemony. <laughs> this, this Sirach stands in awe looking around this strategium is it rivals the the strategium on the vengeful spirit this is incredible well um, unfortunately I do not read the language that is printed on these terminals does anyone read this don't space marine start with high gothic nope. low gothic Oh, really? That's uh that that is a that is a death watch thing, unfortunately. It did not carry over. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to one of the consoles, I'm gonna peel off the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> These look to have never been used. Intriguing. Excellent. Oh. We shall be the first, my friends. Um can, can I like do a perception test to see where I would start pushing buttons? Sure. Yeah, I'll let you do it. Excellent. 
All right, everyone, eyes abound. Look for the uh, command terminal. And then here is the perception test. Oh, wait, um, actually, can anyone help me with this? Uh, mine's 29. Hold, mortal. <laughs> you, before you press buttons, do you speak this language that is printed on these terminals? Um, not speak as much as have tried to read, uh, have tried to read. Okay. Um, before, so, no. before we possibly either let loose a full volley of, of cannon or detonate our ship, perhaps we should go visit with our friends in the cryo bay, see if any still live that might speak this language and can translate for us or even just pilot for us, leaving us free to do other things. Yes, Ira, of course. Thank you for um, curbing my excesses. Thank you. Of course. I simply wish to live. So, Sorak, as this conversation is going on, uh, he he climbs the uh, throne, the throne dais, mm-hmm. and sits in the command throne. All right. Now, important question I have for you is, do you have... Um get the actual 40k term for it but do you actually have interface plugs or something that would let you interface with the throne uh not mechanically but i did throw out that i did command a vessel i don't even know okay. if they're a real thing in the book yeah it, it would it's mostly a flavor thing um as far uh, as yes. i know not even road <laughs> trader has an item for it so well I'm, they're, they're part of the mechanicus implants but you could certainly hand wave if you wanted to like uh, if, if he has been a pilot i mean it's, it's like a one minute part of the mechanicus implants right i remember reading a few uh i actually read the uh, forges of mars omnibus and yeah some of the the captains in there just had basic implants so i think you can um, also get ports for the power armor too which would right. inf- interface with the power armor systems so sarak uh i'm gonna need you to roll me actually a willpower test here and oh. this is gonna be at a minus 10 for you Ooh. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, boom. all right you still Nailed succeed it. so what happens Sorak, is when you interface with the ship you know trying to get a feel for not only the machine spirit but for um the ship itself the machine spirit itself almost comes screaming at you like a banshee so the rest of you cantillus era catatonia you see Sorak sit down and then he sort of like violently twitches as uh the ship spirit begins throwing a multitude of data at you, Sirach, that is nearly like brain burningly melting kind of sensation. Yeah, but... You can see Sirach as he sits down, he sits ramrod straight, and like the his his face just uh, becomes a stone mask. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, as that's whatever. happening, um, the one thing I'd like to add just real quick is. You're able to keep it at bay, at least temporarily, but this is almost like an excited five-year-old trying to tell his parents or her parents about this cool new thing that they saw, and it's it, it would be cute if it wasn't burning out your brain. The second I see him like sit up like that, uh, you know, my my only experience with people, you know, unnaturally sitting up and, and turning all freaky is with psychers. Uh, so the comedy bowler has got to come half up. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly out of uh, the reason it's going full up is mostly out of hesitance because he doesn't really understand what goes on with these technical links. He doesn't know if it's possible for such a thing to take him over like like a Damon would. But he has his gun kind of at the ready. Yeah. So um, Sirak will say out loud. Um, <clears throat> he'll say, "Slower, rein it in." And what I'm going to say is that, yes, actually, as you say that aloud and in your mind, the data rate does slow. I mean, it's still you're having to devote like 90 percent of your effort just to even begin to parse it. But you're no longer feeling like you're going to turn your brain into soup. So small positive. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send out a, a quick uh, tendril of uh, of thought to see uh, to like touch the the machine spirit underneath the data just so i can bypass uh all the nonsense it's trying to shove me okay i'd like another willpower from you 
This one's at a minus 15. Whoa. And you still succeed yeah. with two degrees. Hitting these. So, and this is something I was waiting to reveal, but since you passed your test, you find it early. When you go and touch the machine spirit, you realize two very important things very quickly. The first is this this machine spirit is some form of abominable intelligence or AI in the 40k universe. However, this isn't your standard AI. This is something that you and Cantillus actually know by proxy. Someone, whoever built this ship and put in the machine spirit, has taken a cornate demon and stuffed them into the ship's machine spirit. Or perhaps the cornate demon was the machine spirit to begin with. <clears throat> Why did it have to be a cornate one? <laughs> Because I only have so many avatars, and I already have Ignatrix as another avatar, so you guys get Ember. Have fun with it. Um, so, Sorok will, uh, after exerting my my will, um, I will ex uh, focus to let the information it's bringing me uh, throw everything out of it, and. Uh, only focus on what's uh, on the the what was it deck four uh, that the cryopod. that cryopod the cryostasis uh, room. All right. So you're still trying to figure out uh, you know the how to interface with words. It's more just flashes of thought and data that you're getting right now. So you don't <clears throat> you don't have a conversation going. But as you do focus on deck four, uh, you almost see a camera feed or several camera feeds come into your being. And you're seeing what appears to be displays of ancient looking cryopods. Like we're talking older than the ones on the Space Hulk old. And you're also seeing that most of them seem to be in good repair and good operation. And what you're seeing inside is a mixture of uh, your standard human. But you're also seeing these strange metallic shapes they're not Mechanicus. At least they're not any Mechanicus you've ever known. But they are some fusion of biology and mechanical. Um, yeah, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit there for as long as it takes to basically uh, have the machine spirit, to interface long enough with the machine spirit so that it it understands low gothic and can change all of the panels to low gothic. All right. So it is at this point that I get to roll for the machine spirit because this is sort of uh last hurrah here to see if it breaks on through. Uh, with a 92, that would be a no. <laughs> so I think what happens is uh, as you, again, assert your will over this demon, uh, eventually you come to an understanding, a basic conversation. And yes, all of you watch as the screens change <laughs> from this old high Gothic to a readable low Gothic. But uh, as you sort of disconnect Sirach, you do get an actual bit of verbal or in your head wording from the AI. And it says, I wish to shoot at something and I wish to do it quickly. Please, for the love of corn." Get me something to fight. And that is the last thing it says before you disconnect. There is a good reason you are a captain. Well done, brother. Well done. It is strange to be in a command throne after so many centuries. But it is good. Suits you well. Well, we can read the terminals now. Uh, what all did you see? You took a worrying stance. I thought you'd have been possessed almost. No. Uh, my experience with the demons allows me a great deal of willpower. It would take more than that to overwhelm me. But I do know what is in the cryostasis. It does appear to be, from what I can gather, this ship's crew. Uh, but there may be some... machines down there. Servitors not servitors. And the like? oh. No, not servitors. 
too advanced. Tech adepts, then? No, not Mechanicum personnel. I believe maybe Proto Mechanicum, if this ship is truly uh, pre Empire. Hmm. Wait, are you thinking of this might predate the Imperium itself? The machine spirit on this vessel is a unholy fusion of an abominable intelligence and a cornate demon. Um, Catatonia is uh, displeased upon hearing the word cornate uh, mentioned uh, as tied to the vessel. Do not worry. I have it under control. Mm. I like my vessels with a bit of aggression. <laughs> well, um, what now? I, I guess we go and visit our proto-mechanicum and... We will not be able to pilot this vessel and control it ourselves. We will need the assistance of the crew. It's time to go and wake them, I would assume. Agreed. Here, here. Let us try and avoid waking up the proto mechanicum until we know more. Sure. Um, are we able to look at any of the consoles and see if there was like a captain, commanding officer, someone that would have been in charge in the cryopods now that we can read the panels? Now yeah, that you can read the panels, yes. Uh, that is something you could potentially glean. Uh, why don't you? I'm going to ask Catatonia to do it. <laughs> nice. Human, find out who among these cryopods originally commanded this vessel. We should wake them first. Of course, sorcerer. But another matter uh, needs to be attended to. The matter of uh, property. Um, do we parcel out evenly the members of the crew to each one of us? Uh, can I get first pick um, on who we wake? You can have all non-essential crew. It's, does it's, anyone disagree? That sounds wonderful. I have no need for anyone without medical experience. Can I have someone with medical experience? Non-essential crew. Take the uh, terms I'm or leave still them. Still in. I'm not ready to fight for, for that. I'm still in. <clears throat> um, sorcerer, are you in agreement? Yes. Excellent. Uh, and uh, so me uh, something medical for my friend, uh, the uh, Plague Marine. Uh, anything else we're looking for, gentlemen? Start there and don't strain yourself. Start there, don't strain yourself. All right. Um, I look at the console. It is now in low Gothic. Thank, mm -hmm. golly, thank God. Thank you. Um, my friend, the... Uh, Apostle, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see. I start pushing buttons, and would that be some kind of um, tech use test? That actually is exactly what it should be. It should just be a uh, tech use test on your end. Uh, do I get any plus ten because now it's in English or uh, low gothic or anything? I'll give you a plus ten because uh, I'm liking where your head's at. So yeah, I'll give you a plus ten on this. Yay! What happened? Oh, uh, no. You rolled a negative one degree of failure. Uh, do you want to use right. an infamy to re-roll, or do you want to keep the result? I do, but I was wondering, uh, what, what happened with the god oh. mechanic? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. He did not fail. He inputted it wrong. He put a plus in there, didn't you? Like, you put I the did. plus symbol. Don't do that, because uh, it's a 4 to 0. Just only put 20. Uh, he rolled a 3 in actuality. Yeah, so, oh, okay. So, so what do I do from now on, so I don't mess that up? So in the future, whenever you're adding modifiers to a roll, don't add plus or don't add plus only add minus so if you're if it's plus 20 just add 20 if it's minus 20 add the minus symbol because mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't oh. parse it does not parse the plus signal all right uh, for okay i'm sorry thank you no thank you're fine i'm glad we caught that uh with yeah. a three that's i know that's a success for you several degrees of it um you are able to get a almost a full ship's manifest and i'm just going to start throwing names at you all uh of course i'm going to do it in chat but first things first is you've come across a record of an individual known as Alwina. 
And you see that they are supposedly the first officer of this ship. The second uh, name oh, can, that can come I throw a- that information quickly onto the consoles that are uh, that's in front of um, uh, the main console. Yeah, sure, main console. Just put it okay. on the view screen, Ensign. <laughs> <laughs> So you're all going to see this information. So you hear about Elwina. Uh, the next individual you see is the Engiseer. I'm probably saying that wrong, but that is Gore, G-O-A-R. Uh, the next individual that comes across is a uh, one of the Mechanicus or Proto-Mechanicus, however you want to say it, um, known as Modares. And they are basically the gunnery sergeant. I can spell sergeant today. Apparently, no, I can't. Because Google's like, what, what the hell are you typing? A really hard word. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And then what you're also seeing is that there is something uh, na- known as Eberwolf. And that's a whole lot of question mark. You have no idea why Eberwolf is on this listing or what they are. But I list it because it's fun. And uh, then... I love it. Very like, quickly. Me as the player loves it. <laughs> When it says first officer, is that like first mate or is that like the captain? Uh, That is right below the captain. Okay, so we did not see the captain. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, we did. He was sitting in the chair. Yeah, Uh, I don't know who the captain is. (laughs) I got him there. Uh, What I would say, though, uh, is, and I'm definitely going to butcher this, but uh, you also see a Teja. And they are Chief Churigan, or Churgen, or however you're supposed oh, to say she it. Oh, Kyrurgen. Kyrurgen. I think it's Kyrurgen. 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 Well, however the hell you say it, that's what they are. They are the Chief Medical Officer, more or less. Hey, that's, that's, what that's what I need to speak to. <clears throat> now we know who we need to revive. Let us get down. Oh, wait, there. sorry. One final name that is very important and almost got away from me. Uh, there also appears to be a navigator, uh, by the name of Helchen. Uh, as I pass, as Sorak passes Catatonia, uh, at the console, uh, Sorak will give a, uh, a slap on the, the shoulder, not hard enough to break him, but hard enough to make sure that the Catatonia slams into the console. What? <laughs> Good job. Our, our uh, human. Gentlemen, is there anyone we can disregard on this list as non-personnel? Not, 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 what's it called? What you call it? Non, uh, Non-essential personnel. Non-essential? <laughs> they all look a little essential. Currently, no. This manifest have- says that there is a crew of at least 100. Real quick, just as oh. an actual number, there are about 2,000 people in cryostasis. Oh, I just highlighted the six that I thought would probably be the big ticket item. So yeah, Catatonia, there's 5,994 other crew that you could claim. Oh, excellent. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I was looking at the wrong number. <laughs> All right. Math is hard for humans. I would encourage us to go ahead and awaken the first officer and assure that we can establish command of this vessel without too much of a fight. Agreed. Can, can we do that from this console? Um, ELH? You could. Um, it would basically open up the uh, cryostasis pod that they're in, and they would presumably find their way here. Um, but it's one of those situations where do you want to be there when they wake up, or do you want them to just come to the bridge and be like, I don't know who the hell any of you are. Right, of course. I believe it'd be best if we were there for their awakening, if only to prevent them from waking up everyone else before we can speak. Well stated, um, Ira. Sh- should I remain in the uh, in, in near the dais to uh, you know influence the ship, or can I keep, uh, or should we let um, our our word bearer friend uh, stay here while the rest of us go? You are free to stay if you'd like. You can man the consoles. I would suggest not sitting in the command throne. The no, no. machine spirit is a ag- is quite aggressive. I, I, I don't think can, I can handle it. <laughs> while we are away, Keratonia, see if you can get a ship's manifest along with armaments, any supplies on board, fuel, etc. I'd like to know exactly what we're working with when we return. Can you accomplish that task? Uh, I'm sure I can get most of it. 
Good. And I'm sure most of the Rakul in this ship are gone. Now, you see, now I don't want to stay. <laughs> Why? You and Ratgul appear to get along so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, do, do I have an earpiece yet or I don't? No, I wait. would say at this point, if you guys don't have microbeads, you could just have them for free because microbeads are such an essential thing for splitting up the party. You can just have a microbead. Um, or, or again, for, for Fluff's sake, are there like buttons on most of these doors so they'll let me know where they are or something? You could do Star Trek, t- uh, the original series calling if you like. That works as well. Uh, I don't wanna... bring... uh, if you guys find a microbead, please bring it back. Do not worry. I'll have Moira stand to protect you. And I and I and I look at Moira and I say, "Oh, I am the lucky one." <laughs> she looks at you almost in a way like you're a nice steak dinner. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> that's gonna get. Hey, no, that's that still might be a good thing. Maybe mm. it's good for Moira. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Moira has a vox bead in her armor. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, and a heavy uh, bolter. Yeah, heavy bolter. <laughs> heavy bolter. Yeah. <laughs> well, off, off we go. I guess into the cryo bay. Clunk, yeah. clunk, clunk. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when you get to the cryo bay, uh, what you find is a bit more of a cramped sort of uh, series of just long lines of pod after pod after pod, and the pods themselves are vaguely coffin shaped. Um, they are made out of a clear, almost plexiglass material with tubules, uh, streaming out of the back of each of the coffin shapes. Um, but the general ambient temperature in these corridors is far below, uh, the quote unquote normal temperature. And by that, I mean, and I'm just doing math in my head here cause centigrade Kelvin, etc. Um, if your average, uh, ambient temperature on the rest of the ship is something like maybe about 20 degrees centigrade, this is more about negative 10 or negative 20 centigrade. So it's cold. It's very cold. It's going to freeze my goop. But the other thing that you notice is that, uh, there are sort of these crackling bolts of electricity that sort of almost undulate or almost like a beating heart. Uh, cascade across the tops of these coffins. And in general, uh, what you're seeing is, again, human and quote-unquote proto-mechanicus at the same time. And uh, Ira, Cantillus, and Serac. Ooh, you've got the really fancy Black Crusade book. Um, Which one of you has forbidden knowledge mechanicus, if at all? Um... Nope. I, I have heresy if in some roundabout way that somehow gets to it, uh, but otherwise, no. I also have Imperial. Start is? I'll give you heresy in this aspect. I could see heresy being a uh, being a, a, a good thing here because technically heresy does include the Dark Age of Technology. Technically. Oh, then I think we all have heresy in the Long War. All right. Well, I mean, if, uh, if you oh, want to. I'm, I'm specifying heresy, not the horse heresy. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right. I shall I shall roll heresy. Um because I feel like this might be important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I can't do re-rolls anyways. I'm gonna burn it in for me to give me uh, a plus ten on this test. All right. Also thank you for the hydrate. Ooh, thanks. I'm happy I One did that. Success. A plus ten. So uh, add a character, and this is this is something I want you guys to world build here because I wasn't just going to throw a random crew at you guys that wasn't going to work with you. Mm. As a group, which of the Horus Heresy major groups do you want this ship to have previously belonged to? What do you mean? Uh, for, for Fluff's sake, I'd say world eaters. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <clears throat> the okay. The nice blue and white the white with blue trim world eaters. Okay. I love it. So in that case, yes, you are seeing signs that there is iconography and other indications that the uh, bearers here are the crew of this ship, which supposedly means that they'll work with you 
I mean, as long as you maintain order, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not like you've been thrown, say, I don't know, space wolves or proto space wolves, where they probably would just kill you all and then gallivant the galaxy as wolves as they do. Yeah, good old space wolves. Mm -hmm. So I'll stand at a console and then uh, see if I can find the button for reviving Alwina. Uh, I would say that uh, no role required for this, but you find their pod very easily. And you see inside is that it is actually a woman. Um, she is maybe about five foot two, so she's actually rather stout. And she is, of course, wearing the same uh, bearer colors, blue with white, or white with blue. And interestingly enough, uh, on her forehead is the symbol of chaos, so the eight-pointed star. Um, you don't know if it's a tattoo, a brand, or whatever. You just notice it immediately. I like this one. A devotee. You push the button? Yep. Sure enough, uh, the pod uh, begins to hiss and a low mist begins to rumble out of the coffin as the ambient temperature in the coffin begins to heat up. The individual inside begins to stir, move around, and their eyes flutter open. And as they start to sit up, the lid of the coffin swings up and out to the side, allowing them to almost fall Terminator style. Uh, to the deck plates. And as they sort of rise and look at the three of you, uh, they speak in a language that you do not know, unfortunately. They speak in that same sort of old high gothic. So you maybe get a word here and there, but for the most part, it's lost in translation. This is a good time for me to remember that I'm actually pseudo-demonic and have a fear rating. Ooh. <laughs> oh, what's your fear rating? Four. Oh my yeah. god! Hey, they get max fear. Hold on. Uh, please, don't, <laughs> please don't shock her to death. Yeah, that's we'll, what I gotta we'll look up happens. now. Because <laughs> what a twist! Uh, I I think it's I think it's a willpower test at a negative negative, negative twenty for her. Because uh, a fear four would be a negative Minus. twenty. Ne fear three would be negative ten. All right, here we go, everybody. <sighs> Because we all know how this is going to end up. <laughs> Survey says 59. Well, that's two degrees of failure on her part. Going to the shock table. Yep, going to the shock table. So this is a 1D100 plus 20. All right. <laughs> she this. comes out, dies immediately. <laughs> oh, my God. 109. <laughs> she, oh, did she, um, I, think that she, I think she dies. No, no. Well, no. What happens is she looks at all of you, then looks at... Uh, looks at uh, Sirach and her eyes go wide and she just faints on the spot. Like she literally just kind of crumples and goes <laughs> onto the ground. Can I, can I, can I kneel and like make sure she has a pulse? You can. And uh, the good news is without a Medicaid check, she's just unconscious. She just fainted. Oh, okay. I look over to Sirach. That never gets old. <laughs> mm, I agree. I had the last one went into happen. the last one had a heart attack. Oh well, maybe you shouldn't be in the room for this. Maybe we should introduce them to you slowly. If they cannot, if they cannot survive the sight of me, then they do not deserve to be on this ship. That's also, aggressive. just because someone in chat asked, yes, I was applying that uh, plus ten that you gave to the NPC. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> We're gonna kill half our crew by just a rock, just walking around. <laughs> like he, he's he's gonna go down to the gunnery deck for some reason. We're not gonna have gunners anymore. They're just all gonna be dead. Listen, they're the just gonna that's... fist the cuffs each other. They're gonna make Fight Club because they've gone yeah. insane. The ones oh. that survive, I'll make sure get turned into minions. I can affect like a hundred or a thousand people. <laughs> some stupid number. Oh my god! Can, can he put on a helmet or something? It's just him. Uh, he, he's like some bestial half demon. Uh, just everything about him is horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's see if we can resuscitate her and talk to her for a bit. Well, no. Is there any sort of translation system or something? 
Not that you're seeing, but... And I think it's probably safe to say that you're looking around the cryopod area at this point. Um, Something I probably should have described now that it occurs to me. I mean, you've all seen The Matrix, right? You you know how the machines kept people in pods. Just yeah. imagine that, but just for uh, horizontal roles rather than the vertical uh, setup. Mm-hmm. But what you're noticing is... So again, some of these individuals are proto mechanicus, but as you sort of get a closer look at one of them, what you realize is that this is more machine than person. At first glance, you thought, "Oh yeah, this is this is just somebody with an augmentic arm or an augmentic leg." No, this is somebody more mechanical trying to masquerade as a human being. And there's even some signs that for lack of a better term, this Eberwolf personality, whoever they might be, they are almost dog-like in design. Uh, they are some hellish fusion between a cyber mastiff and maybe a conservative servitor. So I guess if I've got to use a pop culture reference, think Blade Wolf from Metal Gear Revengeance, Ooh. but just 40k themed. And if you've never seen Blade Wolf... Um, just imagine your average sort of combat, uh, combat servitor, uh, that is wolf shaped and has a uh, cool sort of uh, V shaped head, if you will. Cool. So, so the minion I had my very first black crusade game. Maybe. Yeah. That was cool. It had an auto cannon on its back. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay. Well, it seems we're at an impasse. We cannot speak to them. Um, and if they survive looking at Sirak, um, they can't speak to us either. I leave this one in your gentle care, Ira. I, I don't know what my gentle care is going to do. She just fainted. I can't do anything for that. I'm sure there's something in the apothecary. Uh, gentlemen, what's going on? Oh, oh yeah, that reminds me. Since <laughs> since Moira is the one with the Vox speed, I feel like every time you want to talk to us, Moira grabs you like somewhere on your head and brings you real close to her <laughs> neck. <laughs> Just like, Ugh. um, Catatonia, can you look around up there to see if there's any uh, dictionary to High Gothic? I I do have some augmentations to my helmet. I might be able to. Oh, I, I see what you're talking about. Okay. Um, I push some buttons. Uh, That'll be a tech find... use. Tech use, of course. Thank you. <laughs> you answer uh, my questions. Thank you. In the meantime, I feel like the three of us, I, I've gathered up Al, uh, Alwina, and we're heading back to the, the bridge, the strategium. Got it. Okay. Got it. Uh, sure. uh, so again, so for modifiers, nothing, right? We're good for now? You're good for now. Yep. Just straight tech use here. How'd it go? Wow, that is six successes. That is a resounding success. So what I'm going to say is because you succeeded so well, I'm going to give you, after I tell you what your initial success gets you, I'm going to give you three questions that you can ask of the ship, and I will answer truthfully, or at least the best I can. So your base success does get you that the process Sorok went through to get the consoles to switch over to low gothic there does appear to be a translation matrix, something you could give to Ira. So that's your base success. Okay. What do you want to know? And this it doesn't have to be related to this test. What are the right. other three things you want to know? Uh, I, I, keeping in mind what my sorcerer friend was looking for, I say, uh, ship, can you please pull up uh, what's called a document with the manifest or pull up the manifest? Okay. I want to shoot. I want to see what's aboard. So what you see is that there are, and I forget the actual heresy equivalent, but there are several Bane Blades in the cargo holds. There is a Thunderhawk. There is also a Shark Dropship. And basically this thing was kitted out as if it were a Grand Cruiser. And even better, what you're noticing is that the storage... There appears to be enough food and foodstuffs that you could last a, a year on this ship. If you, even with the full crew, you could oh, last about a year. Dude. Oh, so forever. We're fucking loaded. 
Wait, did you say there was an armory too? There is an armory, and although I think it's it's one of those things, Catatonia, where you know some of the words about what's in the armory, but you're seeing a lot of plasma, a lot of melta. You're even seeing uh, maybe even a sonic weapon or two. Holy oh, shit. Thank <clears throat> I, my my brain tuned out everything after Bane Blades. Like it was just in shock. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, that, that, <laughs> oh. That's what I did too. I heard Bane Blade and I just had white noise in my ears. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was just like, wait, what? <laughs> um, okay, so that was a success. And you said I had one more? You've got two more actually. Oh, oh okay, on top of my success. Um, I did write, I already wrote some questions for myself. Um, like, where where was the ship going? Well, for that, I now need to reference you a chart of the Screaming Vortex. All right, let's look at the Screaming so, Vortex. So, I actually have it in Rule 20 for us. Yeah. So, uh, you Ooh. all are actually to the quote-unquote lower right of the uh, <laughs> Screaming Vortex, here. right on the edge. And the closest thing to you all is the Pillars of Eternity. And this is just basic knowledge anyone in the Screaming Vortex would know. Um, but as a player reminder, the Screaming Vortex, uh, Pillars of Eternity, is actually a frozen world that is uh, populated by a bunch of primitive primitive tribes of mutants that all worship Zeech. And it also has some Necron tra- uh, tomb world trappings. So... Uh, if you ever want to go duke it out with Necrons or say hi to Zeech, this would be a good opportunity to check it out. But that's what you're closest to, and that's probably where this ship was headed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, third question, okay, where are we going? I don't think I really need to know where we're from, because <laughs> that's behind us. Where are we going? We got the manifest. Um, I mean, where did we come from? Where did we go? Where uh, did we come uh, from, Catatonio? <laughs> Mm. Oh my god, the the rhyme master. Oh wait. I, I would think that would be the word bearer. Um <laughs> my Germinator bros are here. Somewhere in this in this screaming vortex. I forgot they were in this. Germinators? I like that. Yeah. Um and last question. All right, let me think about that for a second. Sure. Is there any way I can save this or do I need to think of it now? No, I mean if you uh if you need some time to think of one, you can certainly save it. Um give me a couple of minutes, please. Uh sure. maybe we can go back to our friends. All right. Uh, or, or should I let them know? Uh, gentlemen, I, I had some success, or I guess I, I pushed my head up against uh, um, Moira's helmet. Boom. Gentlemen, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, no, it's a Vox bead in the collar. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> that just makes it funnier, in my opinion. He still does it. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just slamming it, it... his face into Catatonia's breastplate. Yeah, it just I, looks I like you're giving a very breastplate. awkward, like, hickey. <laughs> I haven't seen Moira. I, I don't. I don't love her yet. I don't know her yet. You know. <laughs> I, I, I thought I saw her hair, but that that didn't happen. They told me there was a helmet on. She's still. So, she's still wearing. No, no. She took her helmet off so you can get to everything. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. okay. Still, that's uh, why. That's how you know she's looking at you like a nice steak dinner. <laughs> uh, hold on. I want to see if I. I'm even. I, I even care about what she looks like. I'm gonna take a willpower test to see if I can resist her beauty to, for myself. Fair enough. Can I do that, Mister? Yeah, uh, go GM? for it. All right. Does she fluster me? Or would that be willpower? Uh, Maybe willpower would be better now that I think about it. Do I I even care? Is she just just beautiful and I care or is she not beautiful and I do care for some reason? Can you resist? You've resisted it looks like. Oh, good. I see see her her whatever you imagine she looks like. Um, um, My word bearer friend. God, what's the name of your word bearer? Sorok. Sorok, I, I, I imagine, I, I see what you imagine she looks like, and um, I'm not impressed. Not impressed. <laughs> That's okay, Moira doesn't need you to be impressed. Yeah, but it's all in my head. This is all in my head. <laughs> um, and I just do the same thing. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, can you hear me? We can hear you. Um, we got some luck. Uh, we found the ship's manifest, I promise. It'll be a wonderful surprise. And uh, I think that's the most uh, pertinent information. Just get up here when you can. We're on our way back. We have the first officer. 
and because I find it funny, she wakes up and sees that she's in Sirak's arms and oh, is going to have to pass another another fear test. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. All right, well. Don't worry, Sirak gives her his most winning smile. Okay, hey, 67. It doesn't help. <laughs> Uh, it looks like that a 67 means that they are literally frozen in terror. So they look up and see you and then like an icicle or as if they're in cryosleep, they just sort of freeze up and go. Er, er, er. <laughs> well, good. You haven't passed out this time. You're getting stronger. Um. That's how you're going to condition your crew. You're just going to show everybody Ciroc and just you're just going to keep doing it until they, they condition themselves. What, to get whatever it. Ciroc says, good, you're getting stronger. Era is just going to kind of kind of loudly, too, because it's, you know, it's metal and metal, just kind of put his hand to his face plate and kind of rub it and let it a long, tired sigh. <laughs> Listen, I, got, I took the Iron Discipline talent. Mm. They can't a follower yet? Are they going to survive to the point of being a follower? Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> if they don't, if they don't, they're not worth it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we're about that time. We're going to take a uh, five to ten minute break, and when we come back, we're going to have a conversation with the first officer, and we'll see where you guys go from here. But uh, we'll be back shortly.
now, so you're going to have to justify why the hell you were making those noises to the stream. <laughs> Anyways, hi, hi, stream. How you doing? Um, hey, hey, how's it going? So uh, <laughs> if you're just joining us, the players have more or less managed to slowly get a control over their new Dark Age of Technology ship. They found out that the previous clue w crew was put on ice and that they apparently are members of Chaos. And uh, if that wasn't uh, amazing enough, apparently the mention of two Bane Blades is enough to make my players cream themselves. So you got that going for you. <sighs> Multiple times. I've never felt more satisfied in my whole life. <laughs> But uh, where we resume is with everybody uh, back in the bridge. And uh, Alwina at this point has managed to snap out of it. I mean, she's still like giving Sirak the side eye like she doesn't really want to be near him. But she is at least up and well, maybe not up, but she's at least found a chair and is conscious. Catatonia. How is your translation program? Um, it looks like it'll, oh, yeah. Now it looks like it'll work. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to have found something for my friend, uh, the Plague Marine, which is, his name is? Ira. Ira, Ira, thank you, thank you. Did, so did I email that to him? Did I send that to him? Yeah, you could have sent it to him on the way. <laughs> In the 41st millennium, there is only office programs. <laughs> there is only meetings that could have been emails. Translation 2000. Yeah. All right, so I, have, I just I've wanted received... to circle back with you about that translation program. Oh my God. <laughs> so I, I have received either some rudimentary dictionary or is it a translation program? It, it's a program. It'll basically okay. enable you to converse with Alwina, no problem. All right. Well, oh, uh, oh, can I fluff it up and say there's some lag? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you hear, it'll be. It'll, you'll still hear the other person still talking, but you'll hear the translation <laughs> right after. It's terrible. <laughs> and that is 40k appropriate. So yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Well, the the big smelly. Oh, hello, cat. Uh, the big smelly plague marine's gonna go up, and uh, get a get close enough to speak to Alwina. Mm -hmm. She maybe leans back a little bit in her chair. Do you understand me? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, good. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Ira. Behind me, uh, the one that you are terrified of is uh, Sorok. The other one is why have I forgotten what's name? Uh, Cantillus, and the mortal is Catatonia. Uh, we're aware you're from a different time. Are you aware of what we are? Horrifying. <laughs> yes, uh, Father Nurgle's gifts can be questionable to some. I more meant. Uh, are you aware of what Astartes are? Uh, we're not sure when you are from and you can see that there's a noticeable lag here either she is just not understanding you or she's taking time to think of a good answer and it's noticeable but eventually she does reply I am aware of those like you good well that there's a lot of questions that no longer need to be answered. Uh, well, uh, we have appeared in the Space Hulk and have need to get out of said Space Hulk. Uh, that being so, uh, we are, in a sense, hiring you, uh, though I'm not sure you really have a, a say in it. As unfortunate as that is. <laughs> we are taking control of the ship. You will serve us now. There, I said it plainly for you. And at least 90% of your crew belongs to me. There's another pause, and this one you can tell that she's more flummoxed than she is trying to avoid talking about something, but she eventually comes back and says, Okay, um... Who, who the hell are you? Yeah, she's right. She doesn't belong to me. I mean, I you said your name was Ira, and 
that one is Ciroc, but who do you who do you wear? I mean, obviously you're you're aligned to the ruinous powers, but what what is your goal? What why? What what is your purpose here? Uh, well, initially, uh, get out of the space Hulk uh, was was prime number one. Get away from the uh, uh, why have I forgotten the name of the Zenith? Rackle? The Rackle. Uh After that. Um, I believe we were going to figure it out along the way. Personally, I would like to go visit Meyer. Uh, I feel I could get a good amount of supplies from my fellows. Uh, but that's yet to be decided. Hold on, hold on. You said something about a Space Hulk? Oh, yes. Uh, is there... A... Tony, is there any way you could pull up uh, external viewpoints in here? And yeah, you're able to pull up an external camera. Thank you. And uh, she sort of looks at the camera and goes, I see the years have not been kind to our space dock. Oh, that's what this is. Yes. uh, Well, around the space dock is kilometers uh, in any direction of other mashed up ships from the warp. I have no idea how to process that, but I believe you. Space Hulks are amazing things. There's untapped amounts of Dark Age technology in there as well. I wish I'm not even part of the mechanic and I wish we'd explore it. I'm sure there's some fabulous <laughs> virulence hidden deep within there. But and she um, actually motions at a console, but may I? I'm going to look to Sorak. And Sorak sitting in the command throne like uh, Conan, just <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> he nods. Oh, can I be like on the side of your throne? You know, like like girls are. <laughs> sure. Sure. I love it. I love it. So, uh, Alwina sort of taps a few buttons on the screen, and she basically pulls up what is essentially a power reading output, and she looks at it and goes, "Okay." Um, I guess that explains why the engines have been running all this time. Um, long story short, this ship is actually powering what you're calling a Space Hulk. Meaning that whenever we leave, the Space Hulk itself will probably detonate or otherwise fall defunct. Oh. Okay. That is astounding that your vessel could power that. I mean, it is a Type uh, 19X reactor. It can power a star if it wanted to. Uh, I don't know if that falls in line with our current technology. Uh, Sorok, I, I understand that we've fallen, uh, the, the Imperium as a whole has fallen a bit defunct over the millennia, but is that in line with any ship you've piloted? The ships in this time, even during the heresy, were not capable of outputting this much power. But from all of the things that I've heard, all of the tales and legends from when this ship should have existed, this one doesn't phase me as much as some of the others I've heard. Who made this ship? And Alwina replies, but it does not translate. Okay. Mm. What was your purpose prior to going into stasis? We were simply to remain in space dock for an untold amount of years, and the captain ordered us for uh, cryosleep. Who was your captain? Where the is name again does not now? translate, but it is a different name. Where is this captain now? Well, considering he's not standing among you, dead, or so I would assume. Was he Fair. mortal, or of us? Of you. I doubt he is dead. If he was given such a vessel, uh, I'm assuming it is as impressive as it was in your time as it is in ours, then I doubt he was weak in any capacity. Especially to tame a coronate spirit I do not think that that would be easy though I have little 
interaction with abominable intelligence. Whoever it was, they are not here any longer. This vessel is now ours. And he will settle, Sirak will settle his gaze on Alwina, uh, almost like a, a snake, so that Alwina can't look away. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and say, Now, do you serve us? On one condition. I find it amusing that you think you have conditions, but sure. And actually, you see that maybe she, I don't want to say that she's got great gravitas, but she actually seems to be getting a little bit more confident now that she's not staring at Ciroc, you know, fainting dead away. And she says, I just want to make sure that the rest of the crew will be able to receive the spoils of the ruinous powers. The rest of this crew, those that decide to serve us, will get whatever that they grab, what they can grasp. If they serve the ruinous powers, then they will get what comes to them. To, to be clear, to be clear, you you know, we will we will have to together decide what happens to my crew. But yes, you're yeah, that sounds fine. Of of course, uh, like Shark had said, whatever they grab, uh, though any that wish to follow the Plague Father simply need to find me in the Apothecarium. Uh, I will be soon, hopefully, awakening your uh, your churgeon and speaking with him about that. Well, I like to imagine that you have medical technology in there that uh, I've not even imagined yet. Well, that's about as an acceptable answer as I think I'm going to get. So, yes, I am willing to follow you, and I'm willing to talk to the rest of the crew on your behalf. I don't think that will be necessary. I believe that I will be addressing the crew. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, do, do, I, I mean this in the best way, sir. Do you think that's a good idea? So you're going to kill them. Those that survive will be deemed worthy of serving the ruinous powers. Those who are too weak to even stand the sight of me, they do not deserve to be in my presence. I I can't deal with half my crew dead. Sirak, I I admire your ideology, but think of it as this. 99% 99% of this crew will never see you in their lives. They will be sent to the belly of the ship to work in the engines, to fire our guns, to reload said guns. I would feel it would be best if we let the more eye-friendly mortals speak to the, the rabble and we simply test those who will ever be on the bridge or of any importance with yourself. I have to concede the logic of that. This is a ship larger than the one that I had commanded. I will agree to this. Uh, Catatonia. Sorry, sorry. Go, go, go. No, you go ahead. No, please. Before, before I have my thought. Catatonia, you can address your portion of the crew however you wish. Excellent, my friends. I only hope to stand alongside either my and I ping him on the shoulder, uh, my sorcerer friend, or I, again, ping him on the shoulder, my plague marine friend, so as to uh, assert authority over the crew. You might want to wop your, you know, wash your hand off unless you join, unless you want to join the Plague Father's embrace. <laughs> I'm all like, oh, yes. I throw you off my glove. Yeah, you know, my, my oh, God, glove. You, you, you got rid of both gloves. I remember this. <laughs> no, he you picked gave up me two my, more. You gave me Noble's gloves. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did pick up two more. Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. now. Okay. I imagine, I, 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 I'm like, ah. <laughs> I imagine it was a pang on Cantillus and a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a what slapping kind of sticks for a second. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, I just wish to, uh, uh, again, look assertive. My hair doesn't exactly do it justice right now. Well, gotcha. um, 
than Catatonia, since you wish to uh, involve yourself with the general public. Uh, I believe you would work best with uh, our, the new first officer, Eloina. Uh, I would like to head back down to the cryo bay and awaken uh, the churgeon. Uh, what was his name? Yeah, I'll make it a uh, Te- I'll make it Teha? for you. Is it Teha? Teja? Uh, Teha. Teja. Teha. Teha. Uh, yes, yeah, so we go speak with Teha and investigate our apothecarium. Uh, once I do, um, uh, Kintilis, you are still wounded, correct, from our altercation? Actually, okay. Oh, you're you're good. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the only one that's actually in- injured is you, Ira. I thought Kintilis got like almost one tapped. Oh, was that kind of? Oh, was that? No, Kintilis was critically wounded, then spent infamy to regain wounds, so it was only normally wounded. I'm just ah, looking okay. at the health you guys have in roll twenty, and the only person I'm seeing injured is Ira. So. Uh, do I have to click on my little miniature or something? It should sync to your sheet. Um, unless yeah, I set it up incorrectly. On, on my sheet, it says uh, I have current wounds 11, which is, or 9? Nine? 9. Oh, current I see the nine. problem. I see the problem. Most of these tokens are not synced to wounds. That's what's wrong here. Okay. Ah. So these tokens are not accurate. I'll fix that later. Okay. But yeah. yeah um, I'm wounded. Uh, then I will leave the bridge crew and go wake in Teha. Uh, hopefully not make him faint and start speaking with him about getting the apothecarium set up. Are okay. there Sorry. any psychers on board? Uh, there do appear to be some with psychic potential, but there's not like an actual astropath aboard. Um, depending on your definition of psyker, there also is that navigator, but they're not traditional psychers. It's obviously one of those parts of 40k lore that i've never truly understood but they are technically you would see them in the warp is i think where i'm going with this yeah i I, I think i think navigators are like biological psychers whereas someone like um cantillus is actually gifted as a psyker you know what i mean yeah uh navigators uh are psychically mutated to have that eye uh, their the extent of their powers, as far as I understand it, is simply looking into the warp. I don't know if they have any actual power potential. It, well, the reason I say that is because in Rogue Trader they actually have like navigator powers, and okay. they're like super potent if you know what you're doing. Oh, okay. I'll have to look it up, but that sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Like, uh, it, it's hard to play the navigator because nine times out of ten. The rogue trader is not going to leave his quote unquote ship keys somewhere people could, you know, shoot the navigator and then he loses the keys. Yeah. Um, but no, the the one game I got to play a navigator, I just remember unsheathing my third eye and just freezing everyone in a 20 meter radius. And oh, then we shot them. Oh. All, so. Oh, is that is that where the uh, the astropath is where the, the compel meme came from? I think so. Yeah, it sounds right. Okay. Then never mind. I've I've severely uh, understated their uh, their psychic potential. Yeah, they're they're deadly. Like they they're super deadly if you let them be. But uh, at this point, we sort of reach the point in the session where uh, we need to handle some out of character stuff um, and figure out where you guys are going from here. Our compact. So, uh, <laughs> if you will direct your attention back to the map of the screaming vortex. Um, again, you are sort of near the Pillars of Eternity, but essentially you could travel to almost anywhere within the Screaming Vortex if you so wished. And hell, if you want to leave the Screaming Vortex, we can do that too. But what I'm curious is where do you all want to go from here? Do you want to go to the Pillars of Eternity? Do you want to go to uh, something like uh, Mir or, or Meyer? Uh, you know, <laughs> what's what's the play here? Where do you Where do you want to go? Uh, 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 I know Catatonia uh, would like to follow Ira because um, he keeps saying that he has to go visit friends and resupply. Mm-hmm. I like that idea. As a player and as a character, as a player, I really want to go to convert some Tau just because I play Tau. <laughs> and some but I realize they're really far away. 
So I'm going to set that aside. <laughs> and no, Ira's idea sounds the best. Yeah. Uh, I, the only reason I suggest Meyer is because it's one of the few like fully aligned planets. Like it is, it is just full of plague priests and uh, uh, plague meisters. So I would have a lot of clout there as a plague marine. Mm-hmm. They on the ship. Got it. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure we can get you a uh, a sealed, you know, a breather and stuff. But um, and I, I imagine that we, you know, with much less work, could probably get, uh, you know, supplies and maybe some volunteers, maybe more, more minions. Yeah, that that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, we could also do the the same thing uh, if we want to play the current uh, the the corn angle on Zurant or Zorant. Uh, or K no los dos. One than the other. Yeah. Yep. So I, as a player, I don't know the setting of the Screaming Vortex super well. Mm-hmm. Um, as a character, Sirach's main ambition, his main goal, is to... Uh, he, he's basically trying to be the um, Crocodile Dundee of demons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, crocodile, the Crocodile this Hunter is of annoyed. demons. Oh, yeah. sorry. All the right. crocodile well, hunter of demons. Roy, uh, Froggy. <laughs> okay, then if if you then here 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 might be the the path we want to take. Uh, if we're all good to go to Meyer, we could probably get a lot there just from Nurgle clout, and then follow over to Casal, where all the sorcerers are, and we might have some better luck in Casal of getting Damon theme things and getting some uh some uh, some you know tips or people who help us summon uh, things. Yeah, but I, I do think that the uh, person with the most focused goal is Cantilius. Because <clears throat> uh, Sorak is um, Sorak is joining with Cantilius uh, both to help him in his goal because it also provides ample opportunity for his for Sorak's goal. Yeah, okay. my well, goal what is, is to eventually goes? try to reverse what happened to the Thousand Sons. Like, I'm trying to undo Aramon's spell to bring back my brothers to flesh because they're all dust now, which is mm-hmm. a very lofty goal. Yeah. But that well, is what I'm trying to accomplish and to gather as much knowledge about the warp, psychic powers, etc., dark, ancient magics, whatever we can find. And then you definitely as, want Casal. Casal yeah, is Kassal a is... Zeech world, and they exactly. will love you there. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, yo, what's up? Thousand yeah. sons in the house. Yeah, because yeah. so you you would have a blast at Casal. Uh, <laughs> a <don't>... psychic blast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess here's our options. We can we can stop at Meyer, uh, embrace that Nurgle clout for some, uh, and see if we can't get some more, you know, like warrior based people or uh, some like chemists, or you know, something along that line. Uh, and then dip on over to Casal and start investing in some like psychic studies and uh, looking at letting uh, Sirach be his crocodile Dundee self. Uh, we get but, some psychic kitties. I, I, I'm sure there's a daemon in the in the shape of a kitty. Uh, yeah, you no. could probably find one very easily. Soul. But the issue then is, uh, I feel like we kind of leave Catatonia out. Uh, what is what is Catatonia wanting to do right now? Um, I don't want to go to Melancholia or any of the other uh, Slanesh worlds because, again, I don't want to be outshone. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I'm not ready to face another uh, follower of Slanesh and to be challenged to a duel or even some kind of art contest and lose. That would be a blow to my character. <laughs> It would damn the party for me to shoot some prince in the face while we're on their ship. True. So, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the Slanesh show is me. I'm the Slanesh show. So, I mean, is there is there anywhere you're wanting to go, or like what one thing you're wanting to do? Because like, uh, right now we've got Meyer and Casal. I mean, we if uh, if you want some drugs, we can go swing over by Messiah. Um, you want some drugs. Uh, yeah, Messiah, the the chem hunters over there, they they've got some wild concoctions. Um, drugs. Um, oh, wait, wait. I, do you want some drugs or do you want some drugs? <laughs> um, um, can I put a pin in that? I have a couple of days, right? 
yeah, yeah you've yeah. got time I, I just I wanted to make sure that that we weren't like overstepping you or like you know you you were just going along with it. Want to make sure? No, I mean part of remember I'm the wandering prince. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to just keep going. Why well, no? Maybe you maybe you need somewhere to wander. Thank you. Thank you though. Thank you. All right. But no, uh, um, actually, the the while we're on that subject is Catatonia. Um, because you basically are awakening the crew, and they are quote unquote yours. This is where you can pull your minions from. So Ooh. if you if you I had anything rad. for minions. That's where you get your minions from. Excellent. Um, oh, how, how do you want me to do that, ELH? Uh, so what I've done is I've given you, because you have three minions, correct? Yep. Uh, you should see under the minions tab, there should be minion one, minion two, minion three. Got it. And Next you, yeah. you can generate them in accordance with uh, the rules in not only the core book, but the Tome of Excess. Yep. And um, just let me know a, a few things about them whenever you come up with them, and I will flavor them appropriately. You'll have them hopefully tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. Awesome. All right, gents. Well, I know that was a shorter session, but this was sort of an interlude just to get us playing again. Um, yep. So anything anybody wants to say to YouTube before I end YouTube and find somebody to rate on Twitch? Thank you very much for watching. We genuinely appreciate it. And I also want to just thank the chat today on Twitch, too. You guys have been super active. Uh, it really makes the game even more fun to play. So keep up the good work. Don't forget but to you, like you and subscribe. Oh, God, the like and subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and push the little uh, bell button to get yeah, notifications. <laughs> can't forget the bell button. All right. Well, YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. Twitch, stick around because we're going to raid somebody. But uh, bye, YouTube.